Your Excellency. Your Excellency, my dear brother, my friend, the Governor of Center of Excellence, by the grace of God, who will be a second time Governor. Mr. Babajide Sangwolu, Your Excellency, my dear sister, the wife of my friend, the Governor of Lagos State, Your Excellency, my younger brother, former Governor of Ekiti State. Your Excellencies, the wives of my brother governors from Kwara State, Oshun State, Ogun State, Edo State. Edo State is my sixth eye. I'm happy she's here. The wife of the deputy governor, the right honorable speaker of the Lagos State House of Assembly, and your dear wife, other leaders that are here, beautiful women of Lagos State, those who have shown the way. Nigeria is to follow. If we want development in this country, gentlemen of the press, ladies and gentlemen, my friend Samuel invited me to come and participate in this year's annual National Women's Conference. And I was happy to come, unknown to me. I didn't know that he had other things in mind. <laughs> I was thinking that I was just coming to Lagos and see the beautiful things the people of Lagos, the women, are doing in order to bring women to participate in the development of our country. I'm very happy to participate in this conference. Very, very happy. You know, my participating in this conference, I see the pendant now in the sweet us. I don't know whether I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. As I'm happy, it depends them. As it depends them, we defeat us. I don't honor invitations. When I know there's nothing to learn, I honor this invitation because I know there's something I'll go home with. I like to copy good things. I don't copy bad things. I don't copy ethnicity. I 
I came here because I know the government of Lagos State and the people of Lagos State have something to offer for us to learn. So in this, my goodwill message, which I prepared, I'll mix it up so that we can share some experiences and then know how to move on there. It is obvious to me that National Women's Conference has crystallized into a strong women's social movement working hand in hand with the Lagos State Government to advance the socioeconomic interests of women and girls in particular, as well as the improvement of the well-being of all Lagosians. Let me therefore congratulate the Committee of Wives of Lagos State officials, particularly the First Lady of Lagos State, Her Excellency, Dr. Claudia Ibejuke Sangwolu, for sustaining the organization of this meeting since the bathroom fell on her over three years ago. I wish to also commend all the amazing and highly accomplished women and wives of Lagos State public officials who have been part and parcel of the success of this conference. Clearly, your active involvement in this conference reflects not only your abiding interest in the progress of the women and girls of Lagos State, but also your commitment to galvanizing support towards the efforts of the Lagos State Government in building an inclusive, equitable, and progressive society. It is important to note that women are not second-class citizens. <laughs> Let me repeat, Lagos, I mean women, are not and should not be second-class citizens. But they are capable human beings with great skills, abilities, and, creati and creativity. They are therefore very important for the transformative aspiration of any society. Empirical evidence across the world has shown that countries are more secure, peaceful, and prosperous when women are educated and provided with equal opportunities to participate in every sphere of public life, including business, politics, and governance. Indeed, our country is more likely to experience stronger and more inclusive economic growth and reduce poverty when women are empowered with skills and resources to participate fully in the economy as entrepreneurs and business leaders. We cannot have truly representative democracy without according reasonable space and opportunities for women in the political power structure and decision-making processes of the country as a matter of right. Let me say this, and I want you to share this experience. This can only happen with strong leadership. If you have a strong leadership that you have in Lagos, where you have allowed their women to participate in governance, where you have allowed their women to participate in inheritance, where you have allowed their women to participate in business, and that is why Lagos is doing better than any state in this country. And that is why we are taking a cue each time we watch on television, we see women who are chief judges of Lagos State. We see women deputy governors of Lagos State. We see women this and that and that. And we said, of course, why would such a society not grow? Why would there be no development? Why would there not be reduction in poverty? And so when I came on board, River State was created in 1967. Since 1967 to 2015, no woman has ever been a deputy governor. 
I said, no, a woman was the deputy governor at this time. And that was how we choose the woman to be our deputy governor from 2015 up to now. As, and we made sure, not only that, I told her, now we are leaving. You have to go to Senate because I believe you have a lot to contribute. At our time, no woman is allowed to become a chairman of the local government. It was very difficult, not only to be a councillor. We have 32 constituency, state constituency, only one woman in the assembly. I said, no, we can't continue this way. I said, no, we can't continue this way. What is the, why do we send our daughters to school? Most of them are professors. Most of them come out better than we. We must have to give them a role to play. So I told my people, this time around, as a matter of policy, if you believe I'm the governor of this state, then you must support me to allow women to participate more. And we said, look, we will start by making sure that every local government a woman was the deputy chairman of that local government. And so as we speak to, to today, the 23 local government councils, all the 23 vice chairmen are all women. We made sure, as a matter of policy, that every local government if there are 17 councillors, we must have not less than six women as councillors. And today, we are seeing the benefit of that decision. It, is not, it will not come easy. When a man dominates society, we must tell ourselves the simple truth. But with encouragement, things will change, and our things are changing. From what the governor of Lagos State is doing, things are changing, and that is what we expect. We cannot talk about shared and sustainable prosperity if women who constitute about or over half of the country population are delimited from reaching their economic, social, and political potential through gender inequality, discriminatory cultural practices, and unequal access to good education, health care, economic independence, and social progress. In my state, you hear cultural things that bars women from participating, from inheriting anything from their parents. And I said, no society can move if you have this kind of culture that will impede the development of women. Through the House of Assembly, recently I signed into law to say such cultural practices are no longer going to exist. Every daughter, you can imagine I have only one daughter, and I've sent her to school. She's studying. Then she comes back. By the grace of God, God has blessed me. One day, I'm no longer there. And he said, no, she's a woman. She cannot inherit anything. Can that be possible? I said, that cultural practice, go. And it has gone forever. People may not be happy about it, but it requires a strong leadership that will have to change some of these things. And so, when I leave here today, I will go home and I'll tell my people, this thing I'm seeing here, we must replicate it in River State. Whether we believe it or not, the fundamental rights of women and men 
are the same and clearly recognized in our constitutional framework as sacrosanct. Sadly, the claim to equality of rights and opportunities for women is often dismissed and hardly given a meaningful effect in our society with entrenched cultures and excuses that either ignore or condone gender inequality, violence, political underrepresentation, and outright denial of economic opportunities to women. While some may argue, and rightly too, that progress is being made in some dimensions with regard to the practical realization of women's rights to dignity and equal opportunities, not all the gaps are being closed, and even then, at an expected and satisfactory pace. While the challenges facing the growth and development of women are still many, they are nevertheless surmountable with concerted and targeted approaches and responsibility by the government, relevant institutions, and civil society. This is where we all stand to appreciate the complementary efforts of council in advancing the rights and improving the well-being of women and girls in Lagos State through its annual National Women's Conference hosted by the government of Lagos State. The theme of today's conference, Spring Forth, stand out. It is a striking call on women to rise to the challenge and raise their voices in unity and solidarity to take their rightful places in the men-controlled, dominated, and defined economic, social, and political environment. This conference offers yet another opportunity for us to reflect not only on the progress so far achieved in mainstream gender equality in Lagos State, but also to set the women's development agenda for the future. I therefore urge participants to focus and share experiences on the recurrent challenges and provide meaningful solutions that can lead to the integration of gender equity, gender equity and equality across the national legislation and policy framework. Above all, the support and contributions of everyone are important for you to actualize your forward-looking agenda on the growth and development of the women and people of Lagos. Let me say, because when my friend was talking, he dived into politics. You know, as a retiring politician, I'm being very careful. I came, like I said, if some world is not doing well, even if he belongs to my party, I won't come. So, for me, if you're in my party and you're not doing well, you won't see me. If you're not in my party and you're doing well, you will see me. And that is what I stand for. And I will not regret to say that I'm in support of you I don't want to talk the other one. But I want to thank you and your wife and all other wives of political office holders of Lagos State for making me to come today to see what you have done in Lagos State. When I was going through the workshop, I didn't know there are a lot of projects that this organization has been carrying out in support of Lagos State government. I was amazed. I was thinking there's an annual ritual. You know, in Nigeria, we like annual ritual of coming to talk and talk and go. But I'm amazed of what I saw. 
And when your wife was reading out things that have been carried out, I was touched. And I cannot come here and hear this and see and then go like that without being part of the history. And therefore, for what I've seen today, for what I've learned, I'm going back home. You know, this is like a school. I've come to school today. And to go to school, it's not easy. You have to pay school fees. You have to pay accommodation fee. You have to pay extracurricular activities. And then, at the end of the day, part of what will make me, for them to give me a certificate, that I have passed, and what in character and in learning. Because if you don't pay a school fees, will you graduate? So it is a requirement that you must pay your school fees before you collect your certificate. So on behalf, of the women of River State, who I'm going to go back to pass on this knowledge to them. Since I have now graduated, and I, but you are refused to release me since because you found out that my school fees have not paid. And I have promised you that give me my certificate, I will pay my school fees. So on behalf of the women of River State, my dear wife, who has extended her greetings to her excellency, her wife, and all the wives of governors and the wife of deputy governor that are here, we support this so you can continue with the allowable project with a sum of 300 million. As he depend, he de see with us. As he depend, he de pay. Oh yeah, say as he depend, he de see with us. As he de see with us, he go de pay. Thank you, thank you very much, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you. I thank you very much. And please, please don't worry. You deserve more than that. You deserve more than that. My relationship with your governor is quite, quite cordial. So you deserve more than that. And we believe, by the grace of God, we shall continue to work together. Thank you, and God bless you. As he depend, he de see with us. As he de pay with us, he de pay. Oh, yeah, say, as he depend, he de see with us. As he de see with us. He go de pay, hey, yeah, yeah. As he de pay them, he de see with us. As we get de here, he go bury them. As he de pay them, he de see with us. As he de pay us, he de pay. Oh yeah, say as he de pay them. I think the governor of River State, His Excellency, yes, um, we can see, oh, and 